West Virginia's athletic endeavors transfer from Mountaineer Field to Mountaineer Fieldhouse. There's a great deal of uncertainty as the season starts, but Fred Schaus works his coaching magic and the team wins its first four games, though not impressively. Now, onto the floor for the season highlights. At the Fieldhouse, it's Duke against unbeaten West Virginia. The Blue Devils aren't so devilish tonight. Duke's offense is paced by its sophomores, but the shots won't drop. Luckily, WVU has no such trouble. Bob Klassen tosses to Ronnie Retton, Retton to West, and Jerry rips the nets from their only regular season loss last year. Here you see West rebounding Duke's miss. Jerry passes out to Retton. It goes over to Bobby Joe Smith, and the co-captain gets two of his 26 points. A good night's work. Outclass Duke tries to hang in there as center Doug Kistler scores for the North Carolinians, but they are already far behind. Again, Smitty takes the ball. He dribbles into the lane and gets two more for the Mountaineers. The crowd loves every point of it. Howard Hurt tries for Duke. His accuracy is hurting tonight, but Fred Cast tips it in. And here's some Mountaineer teamwork. Worst defeat, 101 to 63. Basketball version of the Hatfields versus McCoys. West Virginia plays Kentucky in its own invitation tournament. In 57, the Wildcats claw back. Sid Cohen cans a field goal. Kentucky has seven straight wins, but the record holds no fear for Jerry West, but he's game. Kentucky's lead mounts as the second half begins, but WVU always battles back. Clausen blocks a Wildcat pass. Jerry West pounces on the ball. He gives it down the floor to Smith, who passes to Bolliard, and Bucky scores. Fans at Lexington are seeing one of the best games ever played at the college, but Kentucky wins. West gets 36. Adolph Rupp calls Jerry one of the greatest, and Schaus presents Rupp with the championship trophy. Two days after Christmas, it's back to basketball. WVU battles Northwestern, one of the big top 10 teams in the country at Chicago Stadium. 13,000 fans witness a tremendous shooting display. Both teams are on and they battle neck and neck. Bucky Bolliard and Bob Smith dazzle a Big Ten crowd with this bit of action, which sees Smith score. Then more of the same as Bolliard pours it on. Bucky swipes the ball and the Aurora Borealis shines brightly as he racks up a field goal. Jerry West fouls out before the game ends in a tie. The first overtime ends with the score still tied. The torrid pace continues. Ronnie Retton races down court, spots Willie Akers, who scores. Northwestern retaliates with a long pass and a basket for the team from the Big Ten. Stadium scoring records fall in one of the year's wildest games. West Virginia tires, Northwestern scores, and it's all over. The Wildcats win 118 to 109 in double overtime. Watches Pitt and West Virginia engage in a nip and tuck first half duel. But the Panthers hold a two point lead at intermission. Then West Virginia engineers a comeback. West takes a pass from Akers, drives, and scores. Pitt All American Don Hennon, number 25, has a bad night. He gets only 13 points before fouling the game. Akers is all over the court. He passes to Bolliard. Bucky fakes beautifully, passes to Clausen, and Bob lays it in. The Panthers hang on. They work the ball around, move it to Hennon. He's having a rough time, but still displays why he's a respected ball player. West Virginia's fast break features Smith and West. Jerry gets only 16 points, but these two are executed with West typical finesse. Defensively, Willie Akers picks the Panthers to pieces. The game gets very rough as West Virginia forges ahead. Bucky Bolliard leads the Mountaineers with 22 points in the fine floor game, such as this bounce pass to West. WVU wins it, and the ancient athletic warfare ends temporarily with a handshake. There's a fine crowd at Morgantown for the Holy Cross game, and millions more are watching on television. This is the first nationally televised sports event ever to originate in the state. West rebounds a Holy Cross miss, fires it to Smith, and Smitty feeds Bolliard for the score. But the Mountaineers are behind, as they have been in their last four games with a 10-game win streak in danger. West is swiping the ball. He teams up with Ronnie Retton to go down and score for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Watch them go. At one time, the Crusaders led by 15. Their shooting has been phenomenal, well over 50%. And it's shots like this one that helped the Crusaders build up a 12-point lead after the first 20 minutes of play. Now the Mountaineers move as Bolliard waxes hot. West is going to try a fallaway shot. Here it is. He misses. But Jim Ritchie is there to put it in. Holy Cross battling the zone press is rattled. They miss. West drives hard for the basket. Watch him shovel past to Smith. There it goes. 
Smitty scores. West finishes with 36 to lead West Virginia to its fifth come from behind victory. At Madison Square Garden, West Virginia's 11 game winning streak is at stake against NYU. With a seven and six record, the New Yorkers are definite underdogs. For a change, West Virginia takes an early lead. Bob Smith leads the way to a scoring advantage. The Violets tie the score on occasion, but never gain the lead despite some great shooting. Smitty has his best night as a collegian with 29 points and a fine performance in general. He sets up this two-hand jumper by Bucky Bolliard. And it's West Virginia leading by six points at halftime. Jerry West is recovering from the flu, but manages still to score 20 points with a display of beautiful shots. A miss by NYU gives New Yorkers a look at West Virginia's attack. Akers tosses down court to West. Jerry feeds him ends with a tie game. Trying to regain the first half lead that disappeared, West Virginia fights back. Smith to Retton. Retton over to Joe Posh and back to Ronnie, who feeds Smitty for the score. But the efforts aren't enough. NYU stops WVU's 11-game streak, 72 to 70 in overtime. A packed house sees West Virginia's final regular season game. It's against always rugged George Washington. GW misses. Another try is blocked by Willie Akers. And the Mountaineers gallop. Clausen passes out. Bolliard gives it to Lee Patron. WVU misfires and the Colonials gain control, only to lose it to West, who scores for West Virginia. Later, more fireworks for the fans. Bucky Bolliard, always exciting to watch, breaks down court, spots West, passes to Jerry, and Cabin Creek's pride gets two more. It's a slim halftime lead for WVU. West led the first half scoring, and he continues his fine work in the second half. Now, this is a good GW club. They lead during much of the game. Lee Patron gets 19, but Jerry's 35 is high for the evening. It's West Virginia's 47th straight Southern Conference win and 33rd straight at the field house, winding up the regular season with a record of 22 wins and four defeats. Now, Coach Fred Schaus can take time to worry about the tournaments that are still ahead. WVU will battle William and Mary Conference Tournament semifinals. This is nothing like the Mountaineers' route of Davidson in the first game. The tall Indians keep West Virginia hustling. Jerry West picks up two points at speed constantly. Again, smooth floor work by Bucky Bolliard and Jim Ritchie sets the scoring stage for Jerry. West of West Virginia gets two more of his 38 points for the night. The Indians have some fine players, too. One of them, Big Jeff Cohen. Here you see Cohen hitting on a real beauty. Then a rare occurrence settles West Virginia fans deep in gloom. Jerry West comes down the floor, takes the ball for a score. But on the play, a foul is called. It's West's fifth personal. He leaves with five minutes still to play. The crowd applauds his performance. Later, gloom disappears as sophomore Lee Patron steps into the breach to score. It's Patron's jump shot, which eventually clinches the game, a pulse-stirring victory for West Virginia. It's intermission time in the Southern Conference Finals, and WVU has a mere six-point lead. But the second half is distinctly West Virginia's. Lee Patron, the semifinal hero, drives all the way to score. The slow-moving Citadel Bulldogs have a growl or two left. Ray Graves gets a driving bucket. West Virginia is seeking a fifth straight conference championship, and the Kings of Comeback have the weapons to do the job. West sinks a long jumper. As Jerry gets his 27 points, Patron busily racks up an even 20 for himself. Bob Clausen loops a pass to Hustling Lee, and Patron scores again on this long play down the floor. Another trophy for WVU's Southern Conference champions. Another tournament, another final, West Virginia versus Boston U. The NCAA Eastern Regional Crown is at stake at Charlotte, North Carolina, and Jerry West gets things underway with a score. The surprising Terriers knocked off Navy after the Middies had shocked North Carolina. A Mountaineer fast break shows Boston what's in store. Here it goes, and Jerry West scores again. It's another thriller for WVU fans. BU tries a fast break against West Virginia, but Bollier's sneak attack gets the ball. Bucky races back down the floor toward the basket. He passes off to Bob Smith, and Smitty hits for two points for West Virginia. WVU got to the finals with a miraculous comeback win over a rugged St. Joe's team from Philadelphia, and Boston looks as tough. All-American honors are being heaped on Jerry West, and here is a very good reason why. Watch Jerry. Late in the game, the underrated boys from Boston continue to make a battle of it, but they begin missing. 
Willie Akers rebounds. Speed Smith, who passes to Bolliard. Bucky holds the ball. Then back over to Smitty again for two points. Another win, another championship, and on to Louisville. An absolute sellout as WVU meets Louisville. The Mountaineers are seeking their 22nd win in their last 23 games, and Jerry West gives them a two-point push toward that goal. Louisville's Cardinals are on their home floor, and they're a slight favorite, but the gold and blue look tremendous in building a first-half lead. Here's a goal from the corner by West. A big halftime margin for West Virginia. Louisville beat Kentucky and Michigan State, but the Cardinals are out of their class tonight. Akers rebounds to set the fuse for another explosive goal by everyone's All-American Jerry West. It's the end of the line for Louisville's Rags to Riches Club. The Cardinals are swamped. West gets 38 points and plays a deadly floor game. He feeds a two-pointer to Jim Ritchie. The Louisville fans are stunned. West Virginia's are jubilant. The route is on as Ronnie Retton, Bob Smith, and West combine talents. Finally, a feed to Jerry, and he powers down the lane for another score. WVU's splashing triumph puts it in the championship game. The national championship is at stake as West Virginia gets the opening tip against California. These teams have beaten everyone in their paths. Bob Smith misses, but the dazzling Jerry West follows up to score. Tension is the keynote as Smitty takes control. He dribbles skillfully, works the ball to Jerry, and the incomparable West does it again. But West Virginia blows a 10-point lead to the deliberate Californians, and with Fitzpatrick and Dalton in the lead, the Bears go in front. Dalton scores on a jumper. At, at the half, California leads by six. West Virginia's attack is hampered as West picks up three quick personal fouls. The co-captain Smith nabs two points with a sparkling shot. California's lead mounts to 13 points, then higher as Dalton hits again. The valiant Mountaineers climb back into contention with scores such as this by Patron. Cal Lee just one point. Following an enemy score, Retton grabs the ball, feeds Akers, and Willie scores. The crowd is in a frenzy, and so is the state of West Virginia. Seconds to go. Cal misses a foul shot. West grabs the ball, but the game is over. The national crown is lost by one point, but Jerry West is the tourney's outstanding player. He ties a record with 160 tournament points in five games as West Virginia concludes one of its...